new chapter. And this is uh, the third day of the Mahikuhi Alumni Association Latin America Conference. Today, uh, earlier today, we had a, a official opening session with the uh, with the distinguished speakers and also a roundtable on open science. And today, following the 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 program, we are have we are we will be hosting a roundtable on geodiversity and UNESCO Global Parks, who will be hosted by Rafael Oceli Pinheiro, who is uh, Mahi who is the, sorry, there is a problem. Who is the, the uh, ch who is the, um, our member in Turin and who will be hosting the session. Uh, thank you all the speakers for coming and uh, I hope you all have a good session. Rafael, please, uh, you're welcome to, to follow. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, I would like to thank all the speakers who kindly accepted our invitation to participate with us here in this roundtable about geodiversity and UNESCO Global Geoparks. I would also like to thank all the people who are watching us right now. Uh, so if you have any questions during the presentations, you can send through the Q&A or post your, the comments on Facebook or send us a message, so then we'll try the as kind as possible to answer all of you. So I'm gonna start uh, giving you a general overview about uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks. I hope everybody can see my presentation right now. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Rafael. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Turin from the program Technologies for Cultural Heritage. I'm also a Mary Curry Fellow. Uh, and I'm going to start giving you this general overview on UNESCO Global Geoparks. So what's a UNESCO Global Geopark? It was designated a part of the official UNESCO framework in 2015, even though there were already some geoparks from the early 2000s. Uh, they are uh, classified as unified areas with well-defined borders. They are composed of geosites and landscape of uh, international relevance. And they have a holistic approach that takes into account uh, conservation, education, research, and sustainable development. Uh, they are based in two main pillars, which is celebrating an, an enhancement of heart heritage. Uh, and the second one is sustaining local communities uh, with a bottom-up approach. Uh, then is divided in four essentials or fundamentals which is geological heritage of international value, uh, the management and the visibility of the territories and the involvement of the local communities. And about the activities that are taking place inside geoparks, they are mainly based on 10 topics, which are sustainable development, education, science and research, culture, networking, women, local and indigenous knowledge, natural hazards, including climate change, geoconservation, and natural resources. So this is the UNESCO Global Park, Global Geoparks distribution around the world. This is a map from 2020. So there, there are a few uh, new ones that are still not added to this map, but here you can see they're mostly located in Europe and in Asia, especially in China with many different uh, geoparks. Here in Latin America, we have currently eight, uh, two in Mexico, one in Nicaragua, one in Ecuador, one in Peru, Chile, uh, Uruguay, and one in Brazil. Although there are other projects and aspiring geoparks that you see later on today. 
Uh, in total, there are 161 geoparks all over the world, uh, and they are in, four, in 44 different countries. And they attract more than 60 million visitors per year. Uh, besides the global geopark network, there's also the regional networks. Uh, here, uh, we are in Brazil, so we're part of the GEOLAC, which is the Latin America and Caribbean uh, network for geoparks. But then there's also the first uh, network, which was the European Geoparks Network, then the Asia Pacific Geoparks Network, and now the new one, which is the African Geoparks Network too. So I hope you a little bit into geoparks right now, so we can start talking about the our projects and activities that we're doing in different parks uh, all over the world. So today you're going to be hearing about geoparks here in Brazil and in, in different other countries. So I'm going to talk about a project that I've been working here in, in Minas Gerais, in the Canasta region, which is the Canasta Geopark Project. So the Serra da Canasta National Park is already established as a federal park. It's on the state of Minas Gerais. It was created in 1972. It involves six municipalities and it's 200,000 hectares with 85 hectares as protected areas. So here you can see the map of the Serra da Canasta National Park with the, with the whole area, uh, the buffer zone area and the area which is already uh, stated as protected area. So the area is mainly composed of very important hydrological features. And one of the main ones is the San Francisco River, which is the fourth biggest, river, longest river in South America. And the vegetation in the area is Cerrado, Atlantic Forest and riparian fields. So this is the Cascadental Waterfall one of the main uh, geosites assessed in the area and one of the tallest waterfalls uh, from South America too. Uh, uh, this map shows all the assessed geosites that we have in the area right now, which is 17, but there are new ones uh, to be assessed. Right now we're working on archeological sites that are present in the area but it's still not recognized as geosites. Uh, the, the idea of creating a geopark uh, with the Canastra National Park uh, was established in 2013 by the Brazilian Geological and Paleontological Sites. So it's not a new idea. And the area is composed of uh, different landscape. Uh, the landscape of the area is composed of different plateaus and mountains from the Proterozoic era. So here you can see some pictures of the Canastra Geopark project, uh, more uh, waterfalls and rapids. Some people from the university here, there's, there is a university, a really famous university called the Federal Institute of Minas Gerais, who is part of the Canastra Geopark project and it's helping us uh, developing the activities and the projects. Uh, the Hot Air Balloon Festival. So this is the Canastreiros, uh, considered a traditional community uh, by the federal government already. And they are part of this region and they are the main communities that, will be that we will be working with uh, in the Canastra project. Uh, one of their main products is the Canastra cheese, which is uh, well known all over the world, not only here in the region in Brazil, but all over the world with many awards. And we're establishing a project in which we want to transform the canastra cheese in a geofood. So the main challenges right now in the region is the land owning conflicts, the intensive mining, the lack of public policies, pollution, erosion, the wildfire and climate change. So the activities that we're doing, uh, this week we are participating in meetings to create 
uh, the municipalities consortium, which will be uh, integrated all of the municipalities inside the, the future geopark. And they will be the ones responsible for managing the area. And we are popularizing the UNESCO Global Geopark label. Uh, last November, we had the first meeting uh, within the university with the Canastreiros and the, the directive board from the National Park in which we presented then the project. And if they were uh, prone to take into account uh, the activities. Uh, so we're trying to integrate uh, minorities. We're doing education, we're starting the educational activities soon uh, with the schools in the area. The research and partnership with the uh, Federal Institute, the development of a geotourism, since uh, right now most of the activities are based on ecotourism. So we really want to enhance this part of geosites. Uh, Geofood, uh, which I talked about in the last slide. Uh, we want to transform the products in the area uh, and take the Geofood label, uh, which was created by the Magma Geopark in Norway by our colleague Sarah Gentilini. And recently we had an approval from the, the IGCP committee with the Geofood project and the Canastra Geopark project is already part of the, this project as well. And then dynamic conservation plan for the area, along with the sustainable development goals for the agenda 2030. So thank you for your attention. This was the Canasta Geopark project. If you have any questions, you can send us on the Q&A or in the comments. I'm just gonna check on on YouTube if there is a there is any questions there. If not, we can move on to the next presentation. So no questions there too. So we're gonna move on to the next presentation, which will be uh, my supervisor from the University of Turing, uh, Marco Giardino. He is a professor at the university as well. And he is also on the management team of the Cerro Valle Grande uh, UNESCO Global Geopark in Italy. So Marco, the yeah. You have the Thank you. On you now. Thank you, Rafael. I'm going to share my slide also to to let you know what is uh, our geopark here. Oh, this is just my slide. Can you see my slide? Yeah. Here we are. So I'm going to talk about. Uh, Cesar um, Grande UNESCO Geopark for for this round Marco, table. We're not we're not seeing your slide. We're seeing sure. your your browser, your internet browser. Uh oh, sorry. Okay, let me. I was looking. Okay, again. Can you see now? Yes, now Perfect. it's working. Okay, just bringing a brief overview on geodiversity and geoheritage in the Cesia Valgrande UNESCO Global Geopark. Uh, we have a motto in this geopark, where stone becomes culture, which is related to the fact that this uh, geopark is mainly made of strong rock of the Alpine chain. This uh, mountain you can see here is the Mont Rose, is 4,000, 600 meters and is uh, one of the uh, tallest uh, mountains in the Western Alps. And from this mountain, we understand that there is a strong link uh, with the culture of the people living here. 
Um, European Geopark, uh, this is the location, it is in the Piemonte region, northwestern part of Italy, at the border with the Switzerland and France. And it's also the study area for our Tech for Culture student. You have known now Raphael. Raphael is the one of the students uh, uh, working for her his thesis in the Tech for Culture PhD program. Sara Gentilini, which is the, the first one uh, starting working in the Joe Park as a PhD student uh, under this project, uh, is the leader of the GeoFood uh, program. And Alicia Mantovani, who is the youngest uh, PhD student, started uh, this year and was selected under a, a new program uh, for, um, for enhancing the geo heritage in this area. So we want to, uh, to show that uh, the diversity of this area is a mountain area, is also, is also the route for cultural heritage, which is uh, shown by uh, the fact that uh, there are different materials that can be developed for building houses or tools or other resources. And also is important for the environment, uh, this diversity. And I will show why. Starting from the Alps, so our target is the Alps, the, you can see the, the, the European Alps under the snow from the sky, but we have to go to the, to the closer to the ground for understanding the diversity. This is a picture by the shuttle, shuttle showing uh, the Po Plain and the mountains. And there is a relevant features like uh, these uh, lines uh, that are fault line cutting through these mountains. And one of these fault line is very important, is the Insubric line is the one separating Africa and Europe, and is the one moving uh, through the million of years that uh, changed the landscape, is the root of our geodiversity. Moving this uh, uh, fault line, we could uh, understand that, that uh, the crust modified, so this is a, is a model uh, for uh, the Alps uh, view by a geologist, you cut uh, uh, through the crust of the, our planet Earth and you can understand that this uh, uh, line is uh, separating uh, uh, the deeper crust from the upper crust and the movement of Africa toward Europe made the changes, relevant changes in this all this area. So if we concentrate in the geopark area, we can understand here that we can see deeper crust and upper crust close together. So you we, by going through this area, by crossing this area, there are places where you can eventually understand this. It's not only a scientific concept, concept it's a place you, you, where you can touch this diversity. Geological maps are not only scientific knowledge, are the, they are showing a relevant geo-heritage in the sense that the, the scientific knowledge here made possible to understand that there is the mantle, the mantle outcropping in these mountains. And uh, you can see, you can visit, this is a visit to Geo Park, you can understand the behavior of the deeper crust with high temperature, the upper crust with granite, uh, the uh, upper crust uh, close to the surface with the super volcano. So a super volcano in the area make understand that there is a, a relevant processes for changing all the, these uh, uh, mountain through time. And uh, by looking at the crust, and uh, looking at the map, you can here uh, you can eventually understand that you can walk through the territory and uh, and uh, cross uh, different part of our planet Earth. So it's a very important heritage in term of knowledge, but it's not only a term of knowledge. The geodiversity is important for understanding uh, the different uh, environment for understanding that in this area, uh, the Ingrim Bright formed when there was a large explosion for a super volcano, but also for understanding that uh, there was uh, tectonics changing in this area and the Alpine uh, uh, Institute uh, Observatory of Mont Angelo Mosso is the place uh, since 100 years studying this diversity. And in this area, you can also perceive a paleo environment. You can see that the first inhabitant in the Alps got to this area and inhabited the caves and sharing the caves with animals. You can feel the 
parallel environment. You can also feel that the geo resources, the diversity of rock, uh, made possible different cultures, the mineral being exploited since the Roman time for having gold or for having different tools uh, for uh, the inhabitants. Uh, uh, like the Pietro Lare is a very, very important stone for artifacts in this area. And also making sure that uh, these uh, uh, relevant geo resources became the base for cultural resources. In our geopark, uh, the Candoglia Quarry give them, gives the marble for the Milan Cathedral and is dedicated only to maintain this, uh, uh, this jewel of uh, architecture and religious site uh, since uh, the 15th century. So we understand that the relationship within the, the diversity of landscape of materials with the cultural resources here, uh, since the medieval age, a uh, population crossed the Alps and uh, established in this area, the Walser population. And they traced their the relationship with the, the changes in the environment due to climate change. They experienced uh, the ongoing of the Little Ice Age, the, the glacier at the time advanced, and they uh, isolated the, their population in this area. But now they are experiencing the climate change reverse. So the retrieval of glaciers uh, front, uh, the, the melting of this ice, but they still as respect for this mountain, they offer the flower and the religious sign for respect this environment, glacial environment, because they understand the value of this. A mountain of ice in our geopark with the several large glacier is also a resource for all the people because of the water, because of the climate being mild because of the reason. So we understand the importance of this large mountain Then Leonardo da Vinci saw, uh, saw from uh, the plane and says uh, uh, he understood the, the high quantity of ice. He is just uh, the real world. He described this area uh, in, in his uh, um, uh, writings. So uh, the dynamic geodiversity we are experiencing now is important. If tourists will understand that we can look at this and understand how the life is changing due to climate change, uh, this will be important for also for addressing a proper maintenance and use of the land. No more uh, a ski lift, no more uh, important uh, um, tourism in, uh, in this mountain due to the absence of a glacier that can be exploited during the summer. But there is also, also other possibility in the term, looking at this diversity, understanding even the importance of the, the deglaciation for changing our habit and having an, a respectful uh, attitude with respect to geodiversity. Exactly what is doing uh, Raphael and other PhD students, proposing new opportunities for this area, starting from the land that would be used for agriculture and starting from other resources that has been uh, exploited, but uh, has to be maintained uh, through time. So. Uh, in 2022, we will have the geodiversity and geoheritage uh, and geotourism meeting for European Geopark Network, and we will be happy to host all the people that want to visit our area uh, and hope that this will be possible after COVID the situation which we are experiencing now. Thank you very much for your attention, and if there is a question, I'm here. Thank you. for your presentation. I'm going to check if there's a question here. Yeah. There, there's a question from Jacinto Rosas. He's asking if there are major differences between national parks and UNESCO geoparks. You, you want to answer this one? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, I can answer because uh, the core of our geopark is a national park. The Cesia, uh, the, sorry, the Val Grande, uh, National Park is the core of our geopark and is, uh, uh, let's say, it offers experiences for maintenance of the, the area and for mm, the natural point of view. While the geopark is not only nature, is also culture, and it's important to have the other territory, 
closer to the National Geopark uh, that can be exploited in term and maintained in term of other uh, um, values, not only natural values, but also um, cultural, uh, agricultural, uh, cal uh, cultural in the sense of uh, architecture or um, um, other, uh, let's say, human science and social science important. So the pillar of a geopark, uh, let's say, is uh, um, extended to cultural values, while national parks are mainly uh, devoted to, to natural features. All right, very good. So thank you, Marco, again. We're going to move on to Fabiano Sosa. Uh, Fabiano is the educational coordinator for the uh, Caminhos dos Canyons do Sul Aspiring Geopark, and he'll be showing the main activities that they're developing right now here in Brazil. All right, Fabiano, you can go on. Thank you, Rafael. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to thank you for the invitation and to the opportunity to be here at this conference representing the Geopark Caminhos dos Canyons do Sul. This Aspiring Geopark is an initiative of the seven municipalities and their communities at the south of Brazil, thinking about the sustainable development of the region through the environment education development strategies of UNESCO Geo Global Geoparks. I bring a slideshow here to have, we have uh, some images of our geopark and information about the actions uh, that are being carried out. I'm going to close my uh, video, pause the internet connection, and share screen with you. One moment, please. All right. That's OK, Rafael. Yes, just put on full screen for, yes, okay, yeah, yeah. perfect. So, uh, my name is Fabiano Souza. I'm educational coordinator for the Caminhos dos Canyons do Sul Aspiring Geopark. Uh, and we are seven counties or municipalities in two states of the Brazilian Federation. Uh, we have 73,000 of inhabitants in our territory. And I will begin with our geological heritage. I'm not a, a geologist, I'm a history teacher. And so uh, geology is not my... Uh, we have uh, on our territory uh, some geological unities. The first one is the Hildehasse Formation uh, that belong uh, of the Gordwana sequence of Permian and Triassic, uh, where uh, sediments deposited during the continuation of the positional system of Parana Basin. It's uh, the positional environments where the transition between coastal plains and deltaic and ionic deposits. Some images here, a waterfall in this formation. The second one is the Butucatu formation, is a formation encompasses an area of approximately 1.6 million of kilometers square and can be observed not only in Brazil, but also Paraguay, Argentina, and Uruguay, with sediments packaged between uh, 80 and 400 meters. The sedimentary rocks of Butucatu formation correspond to development of the desert uh, environment over the this region. We have in this formation some paleoburrows. And these paleoburrows are biogenic structures similar to tunnels who are dug by the vertebrate. For paleontologists, paleoburrows are considered a kind of fossil. And someone called Paleotoca of Aparência on our territory. Some image of clowns, of these animals on the walls of this paleoborough. 
here a waterfall on the vertical two formation. In the third one, uh, the third formation is the Serra Geral. Uh, the rocks belong, uh, belonging to this formation are the result of intense fissure eruptions related to the breakup of the Gudwana during the lower Cretaceous, creating one of the largest basalt provinces on the planet. On this photo, we have uh, one rock formation in the Municip municipality of Torres. In this is another photo of the same formation in the same beach. In this formation, uh, bring us some escarpments of the Serra Geral. Uh, we name it uh, canyons here. Abrupt termination escarpments of the Campus Gerais Plateau scooped from effusive basic rocks with the difference between its base and top reaching over 2,000 meters. The abrupt relief forms have fluvial valleys up to 500 meters deep, which created two canyons here. Some mist in this canyon at morning. Another photo uh, by the, the plateau of the formations uh, with the, the canyons. Here another photo of the canyon of Itambezinho. Uh, on this photo, you can see the, the lines of uh, basalt uh, um, rocks. Some another waterfall in this formation, one waterfall at one formation. The rivers inside these canyons. And the climate. Uh, here on our territory, we have some beaches, uh, like Torres, we have more than 400 uh, visitors, 1,000 visitors during the summer season. In a few days of the year, we have snow here. Uh, in Brazil, it is not common, but in our territory, we have some uh, few days at, at the year when uh, the tourists come here to see that is no. The natural heritage here, we have some uh, bio biosphere reserve in our territory and some animals and plants here of our territory. For the cultural heritage, the tangible and intangible, we have some traditional, uh, the traditions and history of the costume, the culture of identity of the people who inhabited and still uh, inhabited this region. The indigenous, uh, we have the Nupora community, a, nat a native village of the territory. They belong to the Guarani group. Maybe they are 0.25% of our population, but they still here. Another photo of this community. Uh, descendants of Italian and German immigrants here. And uh, the troperismo, the troperos were men mostly who took and brought products and animal troops along paths and roads at the territory between the, the 18th and 20th century. Some are still uh, alive and often participating in educational and cultural activities in our job park. The gaucho as a name given to people linked to livestock activities in regions where natural fields occur in the uh, Bioman Caled Pampa, which occurs in Southern South America, in countries such as Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay. The peculiar characteristic of the pastoral way of life made a culture of this of the zone, delivered from the amalgamation of Iberian and indigenous culture. In Quilombolas, we have the São Roque Quilombola community, located at Pedra Branca region. Uh, construct took place uh, through the 19th century with the flow of the peoples from Campos de Cima da Serra region to the coastal region. The highlands were dedicated to 
cattle rising in square farms and uh, slaves live here. Another photo of this community and the some products made. In this one. Our management structure are created in 2017. Uh, we have a technical team. Uh, we're on financial resources uh, with possibility to raise funds, development and dissemination of the of our aspiring geopark, uh, establish, establishment of partners with uh, local uh, people, management structure of the aspiring geopark. We have some working groups by education, uh, voluntary risk group, tour guides, culture expert, and, and more are coming. Uh, we have a scientific committee here, uh, made by uh, the consortium in 2018. And the education, uh, we are all at our base to, to development or work here. We begin with the teacher training here and some comic book of our job park. We have uh, 10,000 of units uh, to, to the, the students of our region, made for community families and the students. Uh, we have another activities at school, like the visits of the sites. A risk of tangible and intangible heritage, uh, school cultural competitions, environmental actions, identification and in chance of land products, dissemination of the adventure sports in, at the schools, visit of the museum and old properties. In our in, in science, of the our inventory of geological heritage, partner with uh, universities, partnership of the our natural uh, parks on the territory. Here is not our inventory of geological heritage and the tourism. Training guides, uh, at geology and first aid and communication, uh, identification of the new opportunities like bicycle tourism and bird watching, uh, in integrated geopark routes like the territory. Well, another photo I like it. Uh, survey of handmade varieties of territory, iconographic research in order to map cultural influence. Reference in local images. The communication have a, an outdoor niche city with a geosite in belonging to the community. And now we have uh, some uh, interpretive pioneers uh, at our geosites and some totems of uh, in, in each geosite here. Now we have social media, so very active on our site our folders production, uh, exchange of experience with another uh, geoparks at Brazil and the world. And I would like to say thank you for everybody. And I would like to thank everyone for the attention. I apologize for any mistake in English. Yeah, it's not uh, so good. And please follow us on the uh, networks to follow the, the work that we are doing here in our territory. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you, Fabiano. Uh, thanks for the presentation, it was really good. Uh, it's really impressive how you guys are developing uh, many different activities and is still not even recognized as a UNESCO Global Geopark, but as an aspiring geopark. And this is really nice. Uh, so now we're gonna keep going with uh, Joana Rodriguez. 
Joana is uh, a Portuguese geologist. She's working at the Natortejo uh, UNESCO Global Geopark. And she will be talking about the activities that they do in there and the geofood. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Rafael, for the invitation and congratulations for your event. Boa uh, tarde a todos. It's um, uh, five more than five o'clock here in Portugal. I know for you it's still the beginning of your day. <laughs> so also greetings for our, all the colleagues and uh, special greetings for Brazil. Everybody in Brazil now needs to a lot of uh, force to overpass these, uh, these bad days and the, all this situation. Um, so I will try to share my presentation. Please tell me if you are already seeing my screen. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so I will try to present a little bit of our experience here in Atardejo UNESCO Global Geopark and talk about our activities and what we work, what we are doing uh, now. Just to start, I want to try to answer during this, uh, this talk to some uh, questions uh, like, is the UNESCO Global Geopark only about geology and rocks? Of course, uh, the colleagues already, Fabiano, Marco, everybody has already showed that actually uh, it's not. And we, I will try also to show how UNESCO Global Geoparks can contribute for local and sustainable development, and why are these territories unique of uh, unique territories of excellence and resilience. So, starting a little bit about the designations, we uh, all the colleagues are talked about this a little bit, but just to remind that uh, nowadays uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks are UNESCO programs, so they are the same level than other designations that people know much better and they are much older initiatives like the World Heritage on Men and Biosphere. The Geopark Initiative is really the more recent program, but it's only also the one, the only one that has UNESCO in the name. So it's a very powerful brand, new brand that we have to, to spread and, and work to build a stronger, a stronger brand. Just to remind us also that we have nowadays more than 161 geoparks uh, spread all over the, the world. Rafael has already showed this image. And just to remind where we are here now in Portugal, on the opposite side of the, of the ocean, uh, it's a, a small country compared with uh, Brazil and also to, regarding Europe uh, scale. But we have already nowadays five, uh, five geoparks. Natrutejo Geopark was the first one to join the network in 2006. But now we also have Aroca, Azores, Terras Cavaleiros, and more recently Estrela Geopark that uh, entered the last year. And there are more projects and geoparks now in Portugal. They are working together and trying to develop some common lines in some uh, specific areas, like, for example, working for the climate change initiative initiatives, education, geo-food, tourism, education, try to, to, to settle some common strategies for the whole country. Focusing a little bit more now in uh, Naturtejo, uh, UNESCO Global Geopark, as you can see in this map, um, it's a, a big geopark with more than 5,000 uh, square kilometers. For Brazil, perhaps it's not a big area, but for us here in Portugal, it's, in Europe, it's a big area. Um, it is located in the center of the European, uh, the Iberian Peninsula, so we are more or less in the middle between Porto, Lisbon and Madrid. Um, the area, the, the size of the geopark is related first because it was the first strategy and the first initiative of a geopark in Portugal that put together uh, some municipalities that were completely forgotten from the national strategies, from the national tourism strategies. So it was a way in 2003 when the project started, a way to make a stronger territory, adding more, uh, more a big area with more municipalities. And actually it's uh, this, the, the, the as we have seven municipalities, we have a bigger geodiversity. We also have a stronger, a stronger network of partners, local partners, stakeholders. Uh, so it gives also some scale to the, the geopark and to the project. 
Regarding geo heritage that is in the center of our strategy, we have very, uh, very big uh, geodiversity that includes uh, geomorphology, fluvial geomorphology, granite landforms like our Inselberg. Uh, trace fossils, also the fossil record goes back to 600 million years. So it's more or less the oldest um, evidences we have here in, in Portugal. We have evidence of that fossils. For example, also fluvial uh, landscape meanders, canyons, uh, more granite landforms, small scale, big scale, some more canyons, example of Portas del Morão. We also have uh, important uh, mining uh, activity records that date back to the Iron Age uh, with some uh, old uh, mines and also more recent regarding the Second World War, for example, like Wolfram and Team in Segura Mines, and also some activity that date back re recent, more recently until the 80s, for example, for panning from gold. But Geopark is much more than, uh, than the geological heritage. Even the geological heritage, it's in the center and makes the bridges and the links with uh, the other heritages of the Geopark. There is also important biodiversity, um, important the um, cultural and historical heritage with important archaeological sites, military and religious heritage. And also regarding the cultural heritage, there is important intangible heritage, not only the Mediterranean diet, that is a UNESCO uh, designation here in not only in Portugal, but in some countries of South Europe, that it's very important regarding the food, but also some tradition, some local gastronomy, some um, uh, handicraft uh, traditions and uh, handmade uh, products. And in the center of uh, our strategy are the local communities, because the geoparks uh, are a program that comes, it's a bottom-up approach where the communities need to be engaged and involved in all the process. And also because uh, um, people, we believe geoparks are, are not natural parks, protected areas, as someone asked in the beginning. It's a place where we have to combine the conservation of uh, natural uh, heritage with the people that who live here. We don't want the people away. We want the people to live together with the, the conservation. So uh, it's important to work for uh, improve their life quality and also to help to make a stronger, resilient uh, territory, not for uh, um, periods like the one we are living now, fighting against the pandemic, but also make a, uh, try to help communities to be better prepared for other crises like uh, terrorism or uh, climate change or floods or earthquakes or whatever. So we want to, we try to work together with the um, the communities not only to improve their life, but also to put them together in the middle of the process of making this territory um, more resilient and more sustainable. We work as a geopark, of course, we work together uh, for the um, uh, Agenda 2030 and geoparks uh, regarding lots of uh, designations and territories all over the world it are uh, important territories because we work almost to all the 17 uh, sustainable development goals and we work for a big part of the, the uh, more than 170 targets. So it's uh, these, these territories allow a, a wide approach to local development sustainable. The geoparks need to work, as, as was already pointed, in these three uh, axes, the geoconservation. We have to preserve the, the, the heritage we have, the richness of our territories. We have to work the education and also the geotourism. And it's the geotourism is, is also important, not only to improve life of the people who live here, to develop the economy, to make more business, create, help to create and support new companies, also to take uh, products from the geopark to outside. So it's also a very important uh, component of the geoparks. And the base of this geopark must, these and all geoparks need to be the science and research. To make these, uh, these approaches and these strategies, we need to know very well the, um, the, the heritage we have. We need to know uh, the value of our heritage and we need to foster the research, not only in geology, but in several areas that can support and give more credits to, um, to this territory. 
of course, nature conservation is uh, very important also. We work together with local authorities and with the municipalities and with the, some uh, governmental institutions to try to, to ensure geoconservation strategies. The geoparks in Portugal and uh, in most of the countries, it's not a legal framework, so we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot forbid the uh, activities, or, and it's not also our goal. We want to, to, to work together with other institutions to make sure that we can preserve geological uh, heritage. Education for sustainable development is also one of the main important axes. Uh, we have educational programs devoted to all levels of the um, of the school um, since the kindergartens until second until um, university. Our educational programs are made with the, the they are prepared uh, specifically for the curriculum, the Portuguese curriculum. The teachers can uh, before they come they have access to to the plans, to the work plans, and they know exactly what are the contents, and it's specifically developed for each level since the kindergarten until the university. Of course, it's not only um, it's not only these packages. We, of course, we work also with the, the schools from the region, and we try to make together with the teachers also and develop some local projects uh, and try to have the schools not only from the region but also from um, from outside. Now, uh, because of the pandemic, we created this little this little area in our website. We can have some. Uh, it's like a geopark Naturtej at home, geopark Naturtej in casa, where we have uh, resources not only for teachers and students, but also some videos, some books, some papers, and some uh, some ways that we try to put together things that help people to consume a little bit, visit the geopark uh, from home. Tourism and geotourism are, of course, very important. Uh, in our region, uh, we, we foster not only the geotourism, but also tourism. We work together uh, with uh, our institutions and we have our partners uh, and we have um, our geotourism programs where we put um, together packages where the visitor can, can uh, find not only the attractions to visit the geo sites, the walking trails, but also outdoor activities, also the restaurants, uh, also the place to, to, to sleep, the guides, the experiences. We try to make packages where the tourist can buy an experience in the geopark and has the whole package. Of, it's also an important tool to promote the geoparks in tourism fair and in other trade, uh, trade fairs. We also work together with the municipalities that are, uh, of course, our main, um, um, our strategic partners. Uh, the municipalities are a part of the management structure of Naturtejo Geopark. And we try together with the municipalities to find the solutions to improve, not only to ensure the conservation of the geosites, but also to improve the tourism offer of uh, each place. Events are also um, uh, not, unfortunately, now in the last year, we don't have any, any events, but we try to, to attract visitors from other places of Portugal with important events, big scale events with the capacity to attract uh, people from everybody, from everywhere, also even from Spain, that we are in the border with Spain. And, um, and we have events since um, related with music, with traditions, with sport, outdoor, uh, seminars. So we want to work, we work together with, uh, with other uh, institutions to try to make agenda, a cultural agenda, where you can find activities all over the year. The experiences can be also uh, some more uh, nowadays, tourists, and uh, of course now with the pandemic and the new start of tourism, the visitors are changing their profile, and more and more they want uh, more than visit sites, they want to experience the sites and uh, the territories. And for that, we provide also activities that can be uh, go to a spring and uh, try the the water, the the underground water and to, to learn a little bit more about geology and groundwater through a massage or through a, a spa spring shower. Or it's also possible to come and panic for gold or panic for Wolfram. That, is, that was a traditional activity here in the geopark. Can also be boat trips, uh, can be visits uh, to some um, museums. So 
we think that the most the easiest and the most effective way of engaging our visitors with science it's put them experiencing the the science uh, not all the visitors we have they come specifically to visit the geopark so our strategies uh, can be a way of attracting people to, to science. It's also possible to, to have a, a massage. It's also possible to talk a little bit with our mascot, Judith, the trilobite, that uh, is a is, uh, very welcome uh, party trilobite. And we work with our partners, uh, the, not only the municipalities, but our structure includes also uh, private partners like uh, outdoor companies, restaurants, hotels, more than 50 partners that are very important to ensure the services of the geopark. Some of these partners provide some geo services like our geo hotel or geo restaurant or geo outdoor companies. And focusing a little bit more in these partners, we have our geo products and geo food. We developed geo products since 2009. It's a way of um, promoting our geological heritage, our geodiversity through our local products. Some of them are new products, other are transformed, adapt, to try to put a little bit of geology, a little bit of um, geological heritage, a little bit of traditions in the products that people can take home or they can, they can even order from other places. And it's a little like bringing a little bit little piece of the geopark. We cannot collect fossils, we cannot collect trilobites, but you can buy, for example, uh, some trilobite cookies, or you can take a wine, or uh, something that uh, allows you to have a little bit of the geopark at home. Our geo products uh, nowadays are together also with the geo food, that is an initiative, as uh, Rafael already told. It's a brand developed by Magma Geopark, um, that uh, includes not only uh, the geo products, but also a new approach to local food, to sustainable development, to its also commitments between the geo park and the producers, and the commitment also with our visitors that when they come, they need they can know how the geo park influences the quality of their of their food, how our our how the landscapes, the geomorphology, the soils. The, all these can contribute to a better, uh, better food. As Rafael already told, this project was um, selected by IGCP UNESCO and awarded uh, two or three days ago. So we are going to uh, work even more in this brand and try to make it uh, stronger. Nowadays, there are already 22 geoparks around the world, uh, coordinated by our colleague uh, Mar um, Sara Gentilini from Magma Geopark and try to improve and spread this, uh, this brand. So some examples, for example, from Magma, our trilobites from Antortejo, some olive oil from uh, Villuercas Geopark here, our, let's say, neighbors. And uh, some of the examples where we have the communities sharing their practices, showing their um, traditional uh, agricultural practices that sometimes can be uh, shared and uh, when the person buys a product um, also enjoys and understands better and becomes more awareness aware of the imp of its importance if the person knows exactly how it was produced how it was how it is uh, grown the food and all these uh, these details so this is a territory of 600 million years that are preserved in these 5000 uh, square kilometers Nowadays, of course, we are a little bit more um, limited, uh, but we are working together with the other Portuguese geoparks and the tourist board, National Tourist Board. We, we now implemented a SIL that is clean and safe, where our guides follow a strict um, hygiene and insurance uh, measures to try to, to provide more confidence and uh, to make a safer uh, experiences in the, in the geopark. So I think it is very clear that UNESCO Global Geoparks are not only about geology and rocks, even the geology can be an important background and a link for the geo, geo, geo heritage. Also, geo, UNESCO Global Geoparks can, be, uh, can provide bridges and uh, can work together to improve uh, the, 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 the quality of life of the people that lives here and to foster local and sustainable development. And why are these unique territories of excellence and resilience? 
in one, one hand to become a, a UNESCO Global Geopark is a very strict process. You have to follow strict guidelines. You have to pass through a very rigorous uh, evaluation process. Every four years, you have to show uh, you have to be reevaluated every year. You have to send reports, and UNESCO geoparks follow your activity. So actually, you need a, lots of effort and commitment with all the stakeholders to have a, a geopark. So that was it. I will. I wanted to to share a little bit of our of our um, experience here in Natureza Geopark in Portugal. Thank you, Joana. Uh, excellent presentation. If you guys have any questions, please send us through the YouTube comments or here on the Q&A. And uh, even if it's the other one presenting, we can come back. And if you have a direct question to any of the speakers, you can write their names down too, and then we'll ask them later. Uh, so now we're gonna end up with the... Uh, the only official UNESCO Geopark in Brazil, which is the Adarip UNESCO Global Geopark. And Rafael will be talking about it. Rafael is also a geologist and he works at the Adarip Geopark. So Rafael, please. It's okay. Are you listening to me? Yes, it's working. Okay. First of all, would like to greet everyone. It's a pleasure, especially Rafael, for the invite, invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here contributing with you on such a current topic. Uh, the Ararip Geopark is located in Brazil, Ceará State, uh, today with nine geo sites, highlighted especially for fossils of the Cretaceous uh, period. So, uh, but this presentation is focused on our reading of a geopark, based on how we understand the Ararip Geopark. And the photos on that first slide bring a little bit of that. We, we do have an abiotic wealth, okay, a very important geodiversity, geodiversity, but we, we also have biotic elements, human or not, that interact. So, so it's the idea, it's a system, uh, and, and a life system. Um, this perspective links with the understanding of heritage, as you can see in the definition established already in the 70s at the Stockholm conference. Uh, looking at the criteria, the relationship between culture and nature is quite clear. Uh, I believe that we should see this as a, this as a break in the paradigm of duality between man and, and nature. This duality that aimed to transform us into subjects and make nature like a subservient object. And it's necessary to overcome this in practice. And besides, you can see some examples of world heritage, as in Egypt, Abumena, as in the United Kingdom, like Stonehenge, and here in Brazil, uh, at the Atlantic Forest. Reading this slide, you can see something like uh, two views on geological heritage, about geological heritage. Uh, one more closed and one more open. Uh, here there is a tendency uh, here in Brazil yet to think more strictly, especially by the most technical, technical organizations like Geological Service of Brazil, for example. I don't know if this is a reality in other countries. And how should, in my opinion, geological heritage 
uh, be understood in connection, as stated in the UNESCO Geoparks program, uh, that is in connection with all other aspects of an area's natural and cultural heritage to increase awareness of and understanding of the key issues facing society and on the dynamics of the planet, mitigating the effects of climate change and reducing the impact of natural disasters as well as social inequalities. So it's uh, transversal. As you can see, all of our goals are aligned with this broader understand, understanding. And, and that means that we need different views in our work, different professionals from different areas, not just geoscientists. So at Aradip Park today we have a geography, geologist, engineer, historian, lawyer, journalist, physical educator, to, after all, two parts are also about welfare. Here uh, is this objectives of uh, Araripe Geo Park. Transversal. And what are geo sites? Uh, in practice, we have forgotten the traditional definition of geological relevance and these, these aspects. Uh, our geosites are connection points, are connection points. They are like windows, a gateway to other destinations. Our goal is to ensure that the visitor doesn't close his visit at the geosite, but opens his visit from there. That is why it's so important to have cultural, historical, folkloric connections, which encourage the visitor to stay, because he will have a different and complete experience. And in this way, we add more partners, as there will be different uh, themes. Here, just to illustrate this idea, okay, we don't close at a destination, at a geo site, we open up perspectives from it. This is one of our geo sites to, to illustrate it, uh, this, a re relatively common granite outcrop, but two million visitors pass through this geo site each year. This is because there is a relationship between rocks and faith in this location, a religious uh, leader called Father Cicero was established to whom many miracles are attributed, and it moves everything. Uh, here, uh, Grand Knights have a name, like the Two Brothers Stone, like the Stone of Sin, like the Hollow Stone. All of these rocks have a history. You usually say that these Grand Knights are special. Uh, because it's as if they have a, a soul. And these are the links that you, we will use to make people interested in ge geology uh, as well. The link in, is in the sense that it already has for here. And here the meaning is faith. The Arabic Geo Park started uh, officially in 2006, officially on the UNESCO network. Uh, from the beginning to the present, we have tried to develop methods that represent this more holistic view that is so much talked about. It's difficult, especially since we risk making everything too subjective, and at the same time, it's it's hard to quantify a complex view. But in recent years, we have managed to establish uh, something in that direction. So these are the guiding researches of our proposal uh, for an integrated analysis of the environment. Uh, these two works complement each other. So this is the matrix of priorities for actions based on visitation impacts. 
this method establishes an, or, an order to prioritize actions in the two sites that need it most. In short, we have two groups, uh, safe, uh, you can see green and blue, and not safe, yellow and red. Uh, green means that we can schedule necessary actions in the medium and long term. Blue is the ideal situation, as long as we preserve how it already works. Uh, on the other hand, uh, yellow means that we need to work on the due site in the short term, and red means that action is urgent. Uh, to reach this report, there are several aspects that generate a score, for example, the improper disposal of waste uh, or, or the forest damage. Uh, you can see it later in, in the paper. And this is the ecosystem health provision spectrum. It represents a holistic reading of the ecosystem health uh, of the place. As you can see, there are several different integrated aspects and we managed to adapt the, the different variables such as biodiversity and geodiversity through the network analysis. We want this to, to evolve the, the method. Uh, here we will have, we run away from linear thinking. Positive associations are not necessarily good, and negative associations are not necessarily bad. You can see it later uh, in the paper too. Please, please uh, test it in your location and give your feedback to us. We want this to 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 involve uh, this method too. Um, and that is what I, I wanted to present to you, how we think, it, uh, how we do it, how we design the, the Araripe Jiu part within a uh, collectivity, yes, for them, but also with them. Uh, and that is what I wanted to, to Uh, so this is the last slide, and you, that is true to integrate all these aspects that you can see. Uh, being well means that opportunities are being generated. Uh, so I end this presentation with this image. A child in one of our educational workshops building and reminding us that to build it, it's necessary to recognize, to, to do not invent and invent anything. It's to recognize what is already here, uh, recognize our values, our culture, our identity, and value that. It seems to me that everything is a great theater and the geology reveals the condition of the stage and on the stage are the necessary tools for the actors to act. I think that it is what matters. Uh, so thank you very much. Sorry about the, the English. <laughs> All right, Rafael, thank you. Very nice presentation. So you could all see the, the RREP UNESCO Global Geopark. So just to remind you, the RREP is the only official UNESCO Geopark in Brazil. Uh, but you saw the presentation from Fabiano, the, which represents the Caminhos do Canyon do Sul uh, Aspiring Geopark. So it's, it's under the category of aspiring. And then our geopark here in the region the Canastra project, which is still uh, a project in development. Uh, so I would like to thank you, uh, all of the speakers again. Uh, I don't think we have any questions here. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Gladstone and Medio for providing us uh, this platform and this conference so we could all share 
uh, these presentations here and this knowledge. I would like to thank uh, Mary Curry for be hosting this event and the Brazilian chapter. So thank you all. Thank you all the uh, people who are watching us during this afternoon here in Brazil. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.